Welcome back to stage 5 of the Tour Down Under. This is usually the day that decides who wins this race overall. Three long circuits starting in McLaren Vale before taking in two ascents of the now iconic Wollonga Hill. Simon Gerrans had a 14 second buffer coming into the day but with several excellent climbers within striking distance and a 10 second time bonus on offer for the winner of the day, he and his Orica Green Edge team would have to execute their plan to perfection. The breakaway of the day managed to make an early escape on a windy stretch of road. Two Dutchmen, Pim Lipgaard of Lotto Sudal and Lars Boma of Astana were joined by Nelson Oliveira of Movistar, with Dimension Data's Reinhard Jansi van Rensburg managing to latch on before the peloton eased off the gas. The gap grew out to 4 minutes 30 with Green Edge and Tinkoff keeping watch behind. Lickgart took the first intermediate sprint at kilometre 63, and by the time they came back around again at kilometre 103, the brakes lead was the highest it had ever been, 6 minutes. If the race had stopped right there, Lickgart would have had the ochre jersey by a comfortable margin. There was a lot of chasing required to bring back this dedicated quartet as the race approached the two ascents of Wollonga Hill, but a combined effort from Tinkoff, Green Edge and Cannondale saw the deficit slowly start to decrease. It was down to 2 minutes 30 before Van Rensburg launched a surprise attack on the lower slopes of the climb. He crested first before being caught again by the trio behind, while BMC set the pace in front of the peloton hoping to set up Richie Port for the finale. As they came back round for the final time the break was finally caught with around 4 kilometers to go, setting up a thrilling finale on the summit finish. Pete Kenyuk and Geraint Thomas of Team Sky made the early running, but it was a surprise attack from Lucas Hamilton of the UniSA team which sparked things into life. George Bennett of Lotto NL Jumbo then sprung in to attack to chase the young Australian. But it was Richie Port who went over both of them, closely followed by Michael Woods of Cannondale and Sergio Hinao in the black polka dot jersey of the King of the Mountains leader. It was clear that these three were the strongest today and they seemed to be matching each other as they ground their way up the steep slopes of Willunga Hill. And it was Richie Port who showed another incredible display of power on this climb, finally shaking off Hinao on his way to the line and claiming a third consecutive win on this particular stage. The clock was started but despite time bonuses on the line it wasn't quite enough to beat Simon Gerrans into the overall lead, the Oka jersey holder finishing with a small group 17 seconds behind Port. You know, obviously didn't go to plan yesterday, that little uh, time gap on the line but then today BMC guys were absolutely incredible, um, you know they, they backed me here and which is nice I and mean, I've only just started this team so it's always nice to win in Australia and uh, on top of Olanga, it's you know three in a row. I'm really happy. The calibre of uh, climber that's in this race, it just uh, made that last final ascent extra tough. You know the three guys that attacked off the front, they're some of the best in the world. So uh, it was bloody tough. Here are your stage results then, courtesy of Pro Cycling Stats. Richie Port taking the win, followed by the polka dot jersey Hanau, and Michael Woods making another big impression on his first season at World Tour level. Here are your GC standings then, Gerrans holds on to the lead by 9 seconds from Port who jumps up to second spot on the podium ahead of Henao of Sky. These standings are very unlikely to change as we head into tomorrow, a short fast circuit race around the streets of Adelaide. We hope you'll join us for stage 6 tomorrow.